This video is sponsored by Trugal Republic, the precious metals experts. Talk to one of their experts today about diversifying your portfolio to help assure your future financial security. Find their contact information in the description below and pinned in our first comment. James Kaufman, World News Report Today, May 15, 2024. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. All right, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, we've had two more X flares hit our ghost satellite. The first one was an X 3.4 solar flare. That occurred around 900 UTC time. The second flare was an X 2.9 solar flare. That occurred right about 14.30 UTC time. Now, these are not from our old friend AR3664. Heading over to Space Weather Live, running a C4.7 baseline, we have a 40% chance of X flares. I guess that ship has sailed. It's a 100% chance, 75% chance of M class solar flares. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had both M and X class solar flares today. The largest X flare was this X 3.48, which they've left off the list here. We've just had an X 2.9, and you're not going to like where it came from. Both of these came from a sunspot that is just coming around our limb and is currently still unnamed, and it's believed to be one of the old sunspots that we've dealt with before. It was horrific. Taking a look at HMI Intensogram, these flares were generated by the sunspot group right here that has not been named yet, but I think that we've dealt with before. You can see that they haven't been assigned to a sunspot because I don't believe it's been named, and I'm about to well, show you that Noah says the same thing. I'm going to bring you to SDOHMI magnetogram taken at 830 last night so we can see it a little bit better. Obviously, it's further around the limb than that. And Noah and NASA are both saying that any chrome mass ejection would not affect Earth based on the position of these solar flares and associated chrome mass ejections. But, in fact... We did see them hit our ghost satellite that's just a few hundred miles up. And we also had x-rays hit the planet, as you will soon see. Now, I'm not quite sure why Noah's only covering the second of the two x-flares, unless the first one was a filament eruption. But at this point, I haven't seen it uh, addressed whatsoever. This is the second flare at 1438 UTC time. Another X flare from another sunspot region. Another X flare from another region. What X 2.9 flare occurred from region just beyond the east solar limb? A flare is an eruption of energy from the sun that generally lasts minutes to hours. Flares of this magnitude are not frequent. The flare peaked at 1438 UTC time. Users of high-frequency radio signals may experience temporary de degradation or complete loss of signal on much of the sunlit side of Earth during that time period. Uh, this was taken with GO-16, so ultraviolet imager. We will be able to see most of that. And it says another R3 strong radio blackout, an X 2.9 X-ray flare, was observed at 14.38 UTC time, this time from a different region, an unnumbered region from beyond the sun's southeast limb, likely old region 3655, produced this flare and possibly an associated chrome mass ejection. Space Weather Prediction Center forecasters will be doing an analysis of the chrome mass ejection, but due to the source location, Geomagnetic impacts are not likely. Here we go again with old sunspot AR3655. This should be interesting. 
Head it over to Go Solar Ultraviolet Imager. You can see activity happening right here where the new sunspot will be named. I'm not uh, sure that we're seeing the last part of the X flare. This is just a whole nother solar eruption, but that's from the same sunspot. They believe to be old AR3655, which will soon be renamed. Now, I do understand that NOAA and NASA say that these flares will not be uh, affected towards Earth due to the location of the blast. However, our GOES X-ray satellite picked up the X-rays and we see the radiation actually hitting. This is the last part of neither of the flares. This is one of the M flares. And this is the last 2.9 X-flare off the limb. I don't have the 3.4. It happened quite a while ago. But you can see how strong this flare was. It covered all the Pacific, some of Africa, most of Western Europe, most of the eastern part of North America, all of Central America, and most all of South America. Uh, did I mention all of the Atlantic Ocean as well? I also need to mention we're still in a polar cap absorption event with protons and radiation pouring into our poles. So that has not let up, and we're also in a proton storm event still. Wow, which was probably just prolonged by these two X flares. As you can see, we're still clearly in a proton storm. Hard to believe. And if you will recall, this has gone back to May 10th. So this is the fifth day of being in a proton storm. Definitely unhealthy. With all that said, I can't figure out why nor NASA or Space Weather Live didn't mention the X3.4 flare, except for on the top of Space Weather Live, and did actually concentrate on the second flare at 1430 UTC time, the 2.9. Very, very interesting stuff. If anyone can explain that or knows what's going on here, please let me know in the comments below. God bless you guys. Please share. Please subscribe. Always remember, anything's possible. Bizarro world.